Hi, I'm Robert Denton of Robert Denton and Company. My partner Marilyn Smith and I searched the legal tequila producing regions of Mexico looking for a tequila of exceptional quality. We we're looking for an all natural, 100% agave, exceptional flavor. We'd all but given up when we came upon the La Latina distillery high in the Los Altos Mountains. The video you're about to see deals with this distillery. Marilyn will take you step by step through the production of this tequila from the fields to the bottle. Remember, it's basically just one step above a home movie. It's something we did ourselves. So sit back, relax, and enjoy it. Hello, my name is Marilyn Smith. I'm the end company part of Robert Denton and Company. My partner Robert Denton is behind the camera. And we are the very proud importers of El Tesoro San Felipe, a tequila that is handmade and 100% agave. What is an agave? We're going to explain all of this. I am standing, as a matter of fact, in a field of agaves, high up in the Los Altos Mountains, approximately 7,000 feet altitude, about two and a half hour drive east of Guadalajara. Today we're going to visit not only the fields, we're going to visit the distillery with Don Felipe San Carlos, and we are going to go to the bottling hall and eventually meet up with Don Felipe himself in the cellars, and also his daughter will be there. The first question I'm always asked, what do they make tequila from? Tequila is made from an agave. It is not a cactus. I'm going to say that twice. It is not a cactus. It is related to the Amaryllis family. It takes between eight and 12 years to mature and can only be harvested one time, like a forest. Which is very interesting because if you consider grapes or grain, it takes about six months to grow and you have a harvest. If it doesn't turn out, you can harvest again next year. Not in the case with an agave. An agave ranges between the eight and 12 years. It will tell you when it is ready to be harvested. It starts to put a sprout up. When the sprout comes up, it is then cut. And when it is cut, it is left in the field for the sugar to come into what actually is taken called the piña to make the tequila. We will be showing that to you later. But when this is cut, it takes about six months to be left in the field and the sugars will then get to a higher level. It is taken before this happens in an immature plant. The sugar content is low. Uh, the sugars in the Alatania, I mean, excuse me, uh, remember we're not, <laughs> we're not filmmakers, we're tequila importers. The sugars that you find in the fields from Don Felipe's fields range between 20 and 25 bricks. Bricks is a measurement of how you tell how much, it's a name for sugar measurement. The normal is between 10 and 15. So these plants are very, very high in sugar. Then it's very important to have the sugar because what you start with, the better the quality, the better the quality at the end. I'm going to, to go on to the next field down where they're now taking off the baby shoots that come out. That is where tequila, the little baby plants that come out around after the age of four years every year they produce and that is what is planted. We're going to show you that next and then we'll show you how it is harvested before we move on to the distillery. At this time I'd like to introduce Carlos Camarena who is going to explain to you what Jose is about to do. Well uh, at this moment Jose is about to take out the little plants, the children of the big plants of agave that are called hijuelos these little plants are taken out, they are uh, cleaned, and then they will be able to be planted in another new plantation. Okay, Jose, go ahead.
this plant is ready to be put it in a new field and to start with a new plantation that will take, as Marilyn said, between 8 and 12 years to get mature. Now this plant is ready to be harvested. As you see now the stalk has been cut and then the head the, uh, called piña has begun to grow and to have more sugar. When, uh, when the piña is ready to be harvested also it gets, gets a yellow color and in the bottom it gets dark like a brown color and all of the leaves go down because the, because the head is growing. So now this is ready to harvest as, and you see how the piña is when it is harvested. Now here we have a big piña ready to go to the oven and to become finally in tequila, El Tesoro de Don Felipe. Now we are at La Alteña, that is the distilleria that was begun by my grandfather and then my father and now us. Now here this is the section where the old agave mature when has been harvested is received and the first step to uh, converts the agave in tequila is to cut this agave. Okay, this is how the agave is going to be put in the ovens, so there it will be cooked for obtaining the, the fermentable sugars. Now, here we are in the oven that has been, is been, is been loading now with the agave. Here, the agave is going to be cooked. It will take 48 hours with steam to, to get cooked and then 24 hours to cool and then we will take out and pull off the oven. After 24 hours getting cool, then the oven is unloaded with the agave that, as you see, has changed the color. Now it's a brown color that is like a caramel. It has a lot of sugar now that will be possible to uh, ferment in the tanks now. Now this is the Saona and they are grinding the agave. The fermentation is made with the fiber and the whole agave. You cannot pump the honey from here. So the people who work for us has to carry the fiber and the whole agave in those buckets that they carry from their heads to the fermentation tanks. Now this is a natural fermentation that uh, could take two or three days or even four days uh, depending on the weather, how cold or how, how hot is the weather and here uh, it has to be mixed everything 
to have uh, the mixture of 10 degrees uh, bricks, 10 degrees bricks, so it will be uh, easy to fermentate the whole mess. As the honey comes uh, together with the fiber, it has to be separated, but you cannot do that mechanically, so it has to be somebody doing that mixing and getting the whole mold or the, ho the whole uh, uh, liquid in, in one uh, degree. Okay. Now they are charging the first steel to have the first installation of the fermented mixture. At this point, it still has the fiber on it, so also it has to be again carried in the bucket for the container. After the first distillation that you saw comes the second distillation in this steel. Here, the, the beverage has no fiber anymore, and when it comes out, it will be tequila at exactly 80 proof. This is the tank for storage of the tequila before being bottled. From here it will be uh, taken to the bottling line and then it will be bottled. Now, Marilyn, I would like you to taste uh, the tequila as a tradition of this Alteña distilleria and to let me know what you think about it. Uh, the honored Carlos. A cowhorn, huh? A cowhorn is a tradition. I can't break tradition. tradition. I can't break tradition. I must taste. Once again, I will make a statement. This is the finest of the fine. A silver tequila, by the way, all tequila leaves the still silver. Silver tequila has spice and then goes into beautiful, beautiful waves of complexity, very much like an eau de vie. I recommend that you drink this either neat on the rocks, or this is perfect for mixing your margaritas, your sea breeze drinks, anything you want to do in mixing. I recommend this one. It's clean, it's fresh, it's elegant. May I have another taste? Of course, please do. Before entering into the bottling hall to join Carlos and his sister Gabriella, I would like to take a few moments to address some of the laws of tequila and to make a few comments. First, tequila is made from the Weber Blue Agave and goes through two distillation processes. It must be to be called tequila. Second, at the time of distillation, excuse me, not distillation, but at the time of fermentation, it is up to the distiller if he chooses to add 49% sugar to the fermentation tanks or to produce 100% agave, which is 100% Agave. Now, if he chooses to 100% agave, he must do it under the eyes of the inspector from the government and have a certification of 100% agave. I personally prefer 100% agave. It's like common sense. When Rothschild decides to do a fine cognac, he doesn't say grapes are a little more expensive this year, so let's add 49% sugar. It would not be quite the same cognac. But not everyone shares my same thoughts, and there's room for every type in the marketplace. Next, I'd like to address the categories of tequila. First of all, there is silver, or white, and that is on aged tequila, and comes directly from the still and bottle. The second is something in we call gold in the United States. It is Hoban Avogadro. That is silver tequila that has coloring or flavors added. The next one is Reposado. That is aged two months to a year. It does to be in wood, but it doesn't necessarily have to be in a barrel. It can be in a large pre As you will see in the bottling hall, 
And the next is Añejo. Añejo must be in wood. It must be there for one year and one day. After they fill the barrels, a strip of paper is placed across the plug and in, signed by the inspector. And if it's 100% agave, that is also added to it. And at the time it is taken out to go to the bottling hall, the seal is broken, and also it is witnessed by the inspectors. And this may give you a little idea of what Añejo is. Now we call ours Muy Añejo because it is a blending of a two-year-old and a three-year-old. And if I wanted to put an aging statement on the label, I would have to call it two years old because the youngest of the barrel is what I would have to make my statement. Tequila does not take aging as long as cognac nor scotch whiskies. So if someone makes outrageous claims as to I have a 20-year-old tequila or I have a 15-year-old tequila, ask them where their aging certificate is and ask them to put it on the bottle. Because after about five years, it goes downhill. There are always exceptions, but on the average, it does not improve with great age. It begins to work in reverse and slowly go down. Now let's go into the bottling hall and join yeah. Carlos and his sister, Gabriela. Uh, I would like to introduce you my sister, Gabriela. That uh, She is the one who has uh, the bookkeeping in this office. She runs the whole office here in the world. And then I would like to show you how is uh, handmade the, la the labeling in the bottles that, uh, as you can see here, is all handmade. Okay. He is putting some glue on the labels, and then they are put in the bottle all by hand. We are now at the highlight of our voyage. We are now in the cellars of Don Felipe, and we're going to meet personally Don Felipe Quemarena. Don Felipe Quemarena? Good afternoon. Welcome to my cellar. We're going to now taste what will become the next of the Añejo of the Tesoro. Carlos, would you be kind enough? I've waited a long time for this. I hope you like it, Don Felipe. I think we'll let him make the first judgment, and then I will follow him soon. You tell us. I, That's all right. We're in a cellar. <laughs> yes? I smell very well. Oh, yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. Help in us. Carlos? This este, este is a product. Un tequila. This is a product. Que se está añejando, is aging, para nuestra marca, For el tesoro de Don Felipe. Es un tequila. Yes, a tequila. 100% agave. 100% agave. Elaborado con los mejores agaves Made de México. The best agaves from Mexico and from this island. Ya que esta zona se caracteriza por tener los agaves más dulces 
this area del país has the most sweet agaves from the country, these highlands from Jalisco. Creemos y presumimos. We believe and we are very proud to say elaborar that we are making posiblemente el mejor tequila del país, the best tequila from this country. Según opinión de muchas personas de, y de los laboratorios que han analizado nuestro producto. As many people say that and as the lab that has made the analysis from this product. Quien conoce este tequila juzga que no hay mejor. The people who mix this tequila says that there's no one another like this one. El resto lo dejamos a la opinión del consumidor. The rest of that opinion is up to you. Uh, I want to taste. I'm sure I will be very pleased. Salud. 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 Este tequila se está añejando. This tequila is aging en barricas de encino blanco, roble blanco, oak barrels importadas de los Estados Unidos. Mm. They were brought here from the U.S. De el estado de Kentucky, from Kentucky State, donde ya tuvieron un uso, they have been used once en la, en la, en el, en el añejamiento for aging bourbon. Del bourbon. La edad de nuestro producto, the age of our product, hasta estos momentos. Es de dos años. Till now is from two years. Pero estamos, a, a pesar de que ya cumplimos con las leyes mexicanas relacionadas con la norma para el tequila añejo. Even if we agreed with the Mexican laws for aging now, la cual nos pide mínimo un año para añejamiento. That law asks uh, at least one year for aging. Estamos buscando más madurez en el producto. But we are looking for a more mature product. Razón por la cual, a pesar de tener dos años, pues vamos a procurar darle otros seis meses. And that's why even if uh, it has a little more than two years now, we are going to leave it at least another six months in the barrels. Para que indiscutiblemente, so without any uh, discussion about, y de acuerdo a los conocedores o a los catadores de México y de los Estados Unidos, vayamos a, vayamos a, a los mejores sitios, tanto en nuestra nación como en los Estados Unidos, este, presumiendo que tenemos el mejor producto, el mejor tequila de México. So, we will uh, agree with the people who know about tequila, we are able to go to the best places in Mexico and in the U.S. and to say to the whole people that this is the best tequila made in Mexico. We are now nearing the end of our journey. I hope that taking you to the fields taking you to a very historic distillery of which anthropologists have written a book upon. It's been producing now for over 50 years in the old method. This is to preserve for history the last of its kind in the world. We also have now been in the cellars, which are most unusual. They're underground with a misting system to help with evaporation. And he, we have met the family that produces this wonderful tequila. I think the rest of the journey is now for you. Why don't you join me and taste, and I'm sure after you taste the richness 
the softness, the complexity of El Tesoro de Don Felipe, you will agree that this is one of Mexico's greatest treasures. Now that you've seen the video, there are a couple things I want to go back and touch on. The first thing was, you remember when Marilyn was in the field, she was talking about the agave. She neglected to talk about the size of the agave. Some of the larger producers would like you to believe that their agaves average approximately 150 pounds each. That's a record-breaking size. That's not an average size. You remember this book that Marilyn showed you in the cellars? In this book, they mention the uh, size of agaves and said, the subregion of Amatitan tequila, they average 18 kilos. That's approximately 40 pounds. And in the subregion of Los Altos, where El Tesoro comes from, they average 35 kilos or approximately 77 pounds. So that's not 150 pounds. Another thing that I wanted to touch on was you saw Don Pedro Coronado, the man in the tank, not to worry. The, what comes out of that tank goes into a still, and that vapor that comes from the still is then condensed into liquid, and it's redistilled again. So as far as the sanitary thing about having Don Pedro in the tank is not a problem. It's like the old Italian winemakers used to make wine, and wine wasn't even distilled, so that's not a problem. Now, one more point that I want to touch on, and I think it's probably the key selling point to this, other than its exceptional quality, it's 100% agave, it's all natural. It is the only tequila, the only tequila distilled to the proof it is consumed at. No other tequila can say, we distill to 80 proof. We have looked at every type of tequila you could imagine. I have never tasted a tequila like El Tesoro. Try it.